Good evening. What a great sight I see before me. 500 business leaders, associations, and minority entrepreneurs here from across the state of California to celebrate Asian Inc.'s 41 great years of service. I know that we have the best and the brightest here in this very room. In fact, I'm very well acquainted with your expertise. I was um, here last year when Asian Inc., Michael, that is, uh, presented uh, a roundtable dialogue uh, uh, of uh, your business leaders with me, and it was so insightful. I went back to Washington, D.C. to work on those issues. And when we had a small business hearing at the U.S. Capitol, I asked for Asian Inc. to provide a person to testify at that hearing, and you brought Miguel Galarza from Yerba Buena up, and he did a magnificent job. Thank you, Miguel. I really appreciate it. And it's your fearless leader, Michael Chan, that's at the center of it all. We're so fortunate to have such a strong and knowledgeable minority business champion. Not only does he have the vision, he has the tenacity to make sure that all businesses have an equal opportunity and level playing field to be successful. And in fact, it's because of his efforts that Asian Inc. was recently awarded $1.5 million of a federal grant to run a new minority business development agency. And in fact, I want to tell you how great of an accomplishment this is. Asian Inc. received the highest amount of federal dollars of all the minority, new, new minority business centers from MBDA for this program. We should all be so very proud. Let's give them a great big round of applause. Michael, I truly appreciate your friendship and your countless years of leadership on behalf of Asian American minority businesses. Well, I can't believe that it's been over three years since President Obama announced his selection of Hilda Solis as his Secretary of Labor. It opened up the congressional seat, and I won. But what was even more amazing was the next day when President Obama called me from the White House to congratulate me on becoming the first Chinese-American woman elected to Congress in history. But my connection to Asian Inc. is very strong because I know that small business is the key to the American dream for so many Asian immigrants. I know it because of my own history. My grandfather came to this country after the turn of the century with nothing. He faced the discriminatory laws of the time, the Chinese Exclusion Act, which prevented the Chinese from immigrating, from becoming naturalized citizens, or from being able to vote. And he faced the laws that prevented the Chinese from owning land, or from being hired in any corporation. But he decided to make something of himself anyway. He opened up a small Chinese restaurant and worked night and day and day and night. He used that very expensive labor, his sons, and he was able to make ends meet. Two generations later, can you believe it, his granddaughter became a member of Congress. The story of my grandfather and so many other immigrants is why, when I was elected chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus, or what we call KPAC, I made economic development in our Asian American communities my top priority. I wanted to make sure that every immigrant has access to the American dream. And especially since Asian Americans are the fastest growing minority, we certainly must make this a focus. Immigrants are more inclined to own small businesses than native-born Americans, and the small businesses owned by immigrants employ 4.7 million people. And if we are committed 
to making sure this nation recovers economically, we must invest in providing greater opportunities for people to succeed in small business. It is for this reason that I joined the House Small Business Committee. I wanted to ensure that we knock down the barriers that stop small businesses from succeeding. And that's why I support President Obama's 18 small business tax cuts that do such things as give tax credits for hiring the unemployed and for providing health insurance for employees. And that's why I became ranking chair of the Small Business Subcommittee on Federal Contracting. We know that if small businesses get contracts, it is truly a win-win. Because for every 1% increase in the share of contracts going to small businesses, 100,000 new jobs are created. And yet, even though small businesses make up 99% of all American companies, they receive fewer than one quarter of federal contracts. And yet, the federal government could be the biggest customer for these small businesses in the world. It spends about $535 billion on goods and services. Nonetheless, small business has only a small business contracting goal of 23%. And what is the situation for minority contractors? Well, even though Asian Americans are 6% of the population, they receive only 1.6% of the federal contracts. That is unacceptable. And that's why I wrote a letter to every major federal agency asking for the details of their contracting and procurement activities with regard to minority-owned firms. The results were not good. While some departments, like the Department of Transportation, had very detailed plans on outreach to minorities, Others had plans that barely filled two pages. This lack of consistency was truly disturbing. And that's why I requested that the Government Accountability Office, the GAO, do a study on how effective federal efforts are in reaching small minority-owned businesses that pursue government contracting and to provide recommendations for change. It was shocking to me when I found out that federal agencies are not required to and generally do not collect data on which minority groups are participating in outreach events on contracting. How would they then know how well they are doing with minority businesses if they are not required to do such a thing? I'm happy to report that this report will be publicly released this week. My guess is that this publication will tell us things like our minority businesses have difficulty gaining access to contracting officials. I've heard it time and time again from businesses. And that's why I introduced a bill that helps small and minority businesses break into federal contracting by making it easier for them to join mentor-protege programs. These programs are vital because they allow smaller firms to be mentored by the larger contractors, and therefore they can gain the experience necessary for them to get federal contracts. I'm happy to report that my bill passed this May in a legislative package of other small businesses that make major reforms to federal contracting by increasing opportunities for small business and creating protections against contracting fraud and abuse. The bills also increase the small business contracting goal from 23 to 25 percent for all federal procurement. The bill did pass the House in May and now we're awaiting passage in the Senate. But it's not just in the federal government where we can do better. Just last month, we learned that the Democratic National Convention, which was indeed so successful, but here it was going to spend nearly $1 billion on the Democratic National Convention. And we found out that the numbers for minority contracting 
were appallingly small. That's not right. And so KPAC, our Congressional Asian Pacific Caucus, joined together with the Black Caucus and the Congressional Latino Caucus. This is what we call the Tri Caucus. And we had high level meetings to improve these numbers. When we started the process, we found that API small businesses had contracts that were worth only 0.7%, even though we do represent 6% of the population. And so we worked with the DNC to do immediate outreach on the national API business organizations. And th those, those groups included Asian Inc. I'm glad to say that because of this pressure, the numbers for all the minority groups did increase. For APIs, it did increase to five times as much, which is 0.3%. I mean, it's a start. And since then, they've created an API Business Advisory Council consisting of national business leaders so that moving forward, we will always have a voice for minority contracting for the Democratic National Committee. This is a step in the right direction. Well, let me conclude by saying I truly look forward to working with all of you in the business community to move our economy forward and create jobs. And I respect the expertise of Asian Inc. so much. Your thoughts and feedback on how the federal government can continue to advance the growth of small and minority businesses is very, very important to me. And that's why I've decided to put together a small business advisory committee, and I'm asking Michael Chan and Asian Inc. to be at the centerpiece of it. You know, there's so much to do, but I believe that the most important priority for all of us is to reignite the American dream. We must provide the ladders of opportunity for everybody to climb so that with hard work and responsibility, they can get to the top. And small businesses are one of the critical rungs on that ladder. My grandfather faced the obstacles of discriminatory laws like the Chinese Exclusion Act. And I am so proud that this year I had the opportunity to lead the effort to have Congress apologize for that law. But my grandfather was also presented with opportunity, and he took advantage of it. So let's make sure that everybody has the opportunity to see where that ladder is, that they are able to climb it, and that when they get to the top, they can reach down to help others climb up that ladder behind them. I thank you, Asian Inc., for extending that hand of help and making sure that the American dream is possible for every single one of us, regardless of background. Thank you so much for having me here tonight.